I know, I know, it's been a while, but last week I was in Mexico, I did my power rankings, my sister had her wedding that Tuesday night, and then I kind of lost my voice, I was really bad sunburnt, it was peeling really bad, I flew back Thursday night, didn't get back till like 1am my time, didn't really get the, feel the motivation without a voice, and just really tired from traveling to do my weekly recap, but I promise I am here to stay now. No more, no more traveling for me. We're going all the way through Big Brother 26 Power Rankings Week 4. So, a lot has kind of happened since the last time we've had a longer video. Tucker blew up his spot trying to get Quinn out. Quinn is now the, the doppelganger HOH who survived the block. Tucker didn't even use the veto on himself. He saved Angela and eventually won AI Arena so that Kenny left. Um, we have him winning POV this week. There's so much going into the game right now, and my power rankings are kind of all over the place. I, I went back and watched last week's. I don't know what Josh was doing. Josh was just going off of Twitter and clearly watching the live feeds over the weekend have put me back in my right head in, my, in all honesty. And uh, there's going to be some shockers here. But I don't think what's going to shock many people my last ranked player in the power ranking, the person I think has no chance at winning this game, sadly is my favorite player, Tucker. Tucker has put himself in a position where he needs to comp out to win, and depending on whether or not AI Arena stays in the game, there's a very good chance his comping out abilities are going to be out. He hasn't done a very good job building out a potential alliance, especially now that he has the POV. Um, nobody's really coming up to him trying to build something out. He has like this five-point alliance, but I think even Tucker knows he's not that safe. He does have some allies, I feel like, with Angela, Mackenzie, Rubina, t and Kimo, if he really tries to corral them. But he just doesn't feel the confidence to really try to form any counter side of the house that could go against, you know, the, his enemies and the main bit of the collective. And because he has to comp out to win, I have him at number 13 for me because I don't see how any, any way, unfortunately, how he's going to wiggle himself back into the gameplay and put himself in a position where he doesn't have to win every week. Uh, most likely to win this game overall. Number 12 is the person I think who may go home this week because she's on the block and I think she has to win AI Arena, and that's Mackenzie. She spent a whole lot of time in week two and week three pushing a relationship with Brooklyn and definitely Chelsea, and they haven't repaid the favor at all in building out, you know, and backing her in her alliance feel. Her power got kind of, you know, flushed a week early by Cedric and now she's very vulnerable and honestly she doesn't she seems to have gotten on the nor on the nerves of some people like Brooklyn that if she doesn't win this AI arena she's the easy vote out I think she also kind of got angry last week at Cedric when you know a little bit in a way where she didn't need to be and I think they put a target on her back and then she kind of aligned herself a bit with Tucker at different points and again I think with, with how a lot of the house feels about Tucker, just her, the idea of Mackenzie winning HOH and she not targeting Tucker is enough for people to want her out of the house, feeling like she's a little bit more athletic threat than any of the other options on the block that they would want to get rid of. Number 11, I don't know why I had her so high last week, is Angela. Maybe because I thought she'd be able to sneak back in, but it's very clear this week there is not much sneaking. She won another HOH, which was great, but she didn't put up her noms, which her noms would have blown up the game. She would have targeted the Pentagon pretty hardcore, and who knows what, how it would have went after that. Uh, and she gets to the play next week. She got immunity, but she's very clearly going to be Tucker's backup option. So if Tucker isn't on the block next Thursday, there's a very good chance that Angela will be going home unless he somehow saves her with a POV that saves him and her if the house is trying to backdoor Tucker and he gets picked. She, again, isn't able to be building out anything a little bit more. Um, there's a little bit of wiggle room maybe with Chemo and t -Core, but... They don't still trust Angela enough because she develops and publicly says a lot of weird theories, including that Rabina is either one, playing Tucker, and two, involved in the power with Brooklyn and Chelsea when she's very much not. So Angela has a long way to go in this game to get anything going well. And until Tucker's out, I think she's going to be the backup to Tucker. And given how well he does in these comps, 
you don't want to be the backup option to her because a good chance the backup option is the one going to be going home. Speaking of backup options to Tucker, that is Rubina this week. Now, I think Rubina has a little bit more of a uh, solid foundation with people at the house, like Teak Decor, Chemo, even I think, you know, Joseph and Quinn a bit will, will protect her. But there is a chance that if Mackenzie wins the uh, AI Arena this week, that she's going to go. I don't know how much t and Chemo are willing to force themselves into maybe a tie vote situation to protect Rubina. They are, you know... And she isn't doing a good job playing for herself, you know, to get herself aligned with other people or to make people feel like she's valuable. She's kind of accepted the idea that she's attached to Tucker, and there isn't much wiggle room for her overall. And that's kind of a downside for Rubina. I love her energy. I love, you know, this, the, the joy she brings, I think, to the feeds. But like Mackenzie, she's kind of the one of the two options. And unless something flips here in the next couple of days, one of those two ladies are going to be going home this week. A person that could really make something flip happen is my number nine ranked player, and that's Leah. Leah isn't quite yet on the block list of people. She isn't affiliated with Tucker, which definitely saves her from the four people below her so far. But she doesn't have anybody coming up and building an alliance with her. And nobody really trusts or wants to work with her, besides maybe Quinn. But Quinn has not taken the social cues about not flirting and her not being interested. So... In a way, Quinn makes her uncomfortable too much to the point where, like, she doesn't really want to work with Quinn that much either. She's lucky not to be on the block this week. I definitely think Chelsea's starting to feel her as more of a threat to the guys, even though I think all the guys would be happy to get rid of Leah at any point here. The only person who might not be happy at the current moment is Quinn, but I think there's enough information out there that could have made Quinn be happy to get rid of Leah as soon as possible. Speaking about Quinn, my number eight ranked player, you know, he's surviving the structures a bit because he's so well insulated with both the Pentagon and the Collective, and for whatever reason, the Pentagon is very loyal to him, even though he's shown nothing but unloyalty to them. Um, he's still in there and doing well. If he can, I think there's enough shields in front of him, with whether it be Leah, whether it be maybe Cam or Cedric, that maybe he can squeak away from the Tucker ordeal on the block if Tucker wins the next HOH or something like that. Um, if he can survive Tucker, Quinn could, I think, make a big run at this game later on. But he really has to survive the onslaught of Tucker. And honestly, Joseph as well has been undercutting him a lot with the Pentagon Alliance people. Not really breaking through yet, but if any time that becomes something that clicks... Quinn could be in trouble and be on the outs. He's definitely the one that's most at risk in the collective. And even Takor and Chemo aren't exactly thrilled with Quinn either. So we'll have to see how he moves these next couple weeks. Will he be able to outlast Tucker? Or will Tucker take Quinn out? That's kind of why he's only ranked 8th. Ranked number 7th is the self-proclaimed star of the season, Joseph. Joseph... Is in the collective. He thinks he's running the collective. But the problem with Joseph is he knows about the Pentagon in the collective and he's not building out the collective to work with him. There's no real, you know, rush to maybe, you know, pair up with Kimor, you know, Kimo and Decor in the collective and try to figure out a way to break the collective up. He has a loose relationship with Tucker, but I don't think Tucker trusts him all that much. And his main play is just putting a lot of seeds of doubt into Quinn with all the other members of the Pentagon. But he doesn't have much of like a number two or number three, in my opinion. And I think as this game gets further, that's why I think Joseph is maybe going to flounder later. I think he feels like he's, he has a lot of people who trust him. But man, Joseph, Brooklyn was let into the Pentagon. Man, Brooklyn was let in the collective, and you found out why when Quinn told you about the Pentagon. Like... Joseph, Joseph, start building a counter-alliance. They're just going to swallow you from both sides. So we'll see where Joseph goes from, you know, from here on out. Number six, dropping a lot for me. Somebody who I think is in a very good position, but somebody I saw have a very negative reaction to adversary, you know, having an adversary this week, and that's Brooklyn. Brooklyn, in my opinion, does have the best position in the house. 
the issue of why Brooklyn is ranked number six for me is because she had a full-on anger panic attack that Angela picked her twice in a knockout comp. A knockout comp, she knew it didn't matter who won because guess what? Quinn was going to take over HOH and Brooklyn was going to be safe. Also, she put she picked Angela for a second time before Angela picked her for a second time. So, like, I'm sorry if this is her, like, facing adversary, you know, her stress levels whenever she's in a very comfortable and safe position. What's she going to be like down the line when she is going to be a potential target for somebody? When she does find her way on the block for whatever reason. Like... When she has to be on slop for a week, she's shown me that if she's not in the good position, she's going to fold and make a lot of errors. And luckily for her, this week it was with Angela, but later on down the line, if it's with somebody like Decor, if it's with somebody like a Cedric or a Chelsea, who knows? But I don't think she has the head on her to be able to last to the end game. And I think we're just waiting until Brooklyn's in a bad spot and she's going to blow up much like Angela did week one. Number five, because I do think he's safe this week. He could drop down. He could have dropped down lower, but I do think he's safe this week as Cedric. He put himself on the block to beat Tucker. He did not beat Tucker like he didn't beat Tucker last week. And he's at risk of a vote flip. Now, he has a pretty decent relationship with Decor. Obviously, maybe not as good as Rubina with Decor. So I so I think he's going to be safe. And maybe once he's safe, he'll realize never to go on the block again. And I think that could help him. But there's still that chance this week that maybe, you know, Decor was talking to Leia earlier. Like, who do you feel threatened by? And she said, Mackenzie and Cedric. I'm not threatened by Rubina at all. And if that's kind of how Leah's, Leah's feeling, maybe there's a way to core and chemo are able to bring Leah in, Mackenzie in, Rabina in, and be like, hey, as long as you guys beat Cedric, we'll tie a vote and we'll have Angela send Cedric home. Angela promised him that he would break a tie in her way, but Angela's kind of going to be listening to Tucker during the scenario. And I think if Tucker says, hey, vote out Cedric, Angela's going to vote out Cedric. But who knows? Outside of that, though, I think if he makes it through this week, I think he's pretty safe overall. It seems like Tucker has shifted his focus fully on Quinn. And, again, I just think he's pretty well insulated with some of the people in this house. And as long as he survives the block this week, his power rankings will go up. Now, if he doesn't survive the block this week, he won't be on next week's power rankings. And that's how this works. Number four is Chemo. A lot of people are upset with Decor and Chemo for not talking a lot this week, for not pushing so hard, for not doing this, not doing that. The thing with this house, though, is they don't really have to push yet. They have Quinn basically ratting out the Pentagon, saying he wants to flip on the Pentagon. They have Tucker safe, knowing that if Tucker wins, he's going to be attacking part of the collective that isn't them. Even Mc- you know other people like Mackenzie and Rabina, they know if they win, they're going to be going after the, the people in the, the collective that aren't them. To stick their head out here with, you know, and, and maybe even make an enemy out of Leia with Quinn, I think that might be a little bit too soon for them. They still have good relationships with, I think, Chelsea, with Cedric, with Cam. Um, there's no reason for them to break up the game too much yet, because I think once Joseph and Quinn break up the collective and maybe even break up the Pentagon, I do think people like Chelsea, people like Cedric or Cam, are going to fall into their hands and we'll see I, I just I, I just don't agree with people saying that they needed to be more aggressive this week I think they're able to wait a couple more weeks as some of these house targets get knocked off and when things blow up I think people are going to be coming to them for safety and the targets are going to be put on Joseph and Quinn that's just my prediction which is why surprisingly at number three for me because he's quiet because he isn't going to be on the target list I think anytime soon for some people Maybe Tucker a bit, but I think Tucker has other people that he, you know, that could get targeted and be voted out before him. And that's Cam. Cam doesn't talk much game. Cam is very boring. But what Cam can do with it as the game shifts more towards the mid and end game is he can win a lot of comps. Especially if Tucker and Quinn are out and his only real competition is Cedric. Cedric, who might even be loyal into like a final two with him as the game goes on. Cam to me is in perfect jag position. Able to make it kind of past Jury 
and get his way to just winning the POVs or the HOHs. And just by doing that, having the power enough to get winner's equity. Because that's what Jag did last year. Jag was a terrible player. Absolutely terrible player. But because he won every single HOH and POV and that he had the appearance of power, they gave him the win. I think Cam is prime consideration for that to happen this year. He was second in that quiz comp. As the comps get more fast, you know, speed-based and athletic, I think Cam's going to come out and he's going to start winning some of these HOHs and POVs. And next thing you know, oh, shoot, we're at the final three and Cam could win the final HOH and make it. And he had all the HOH plays. He made all the big plays. I guess we're just going to give him the game just like we gave Jag the game. I see it. Not many people do. He's low on the stock watch for RHAP. He is not people's favorite. But I'm telling you, they're not targeting him. He is athletic. He is smart, as he's kind of shown different areas with some of these comps. He he, he can sneak in there after, once Jury kind of starts and just win all those comps. BB Comics, Cam. Um, running back and forth, Cam. Quiz comp, maybe Cam. In those POVs, there's a lot of just running back and forth, Cam. I'm just saying, it's. I can see it. I can see it. He doesn't feel like a big player, so once people start targeting big players, who's going to be left there to win these comps? Cam. Watch out for Cam, number three. I'm going to be buying a lot of Cam stock this week from the stock, stock watch. Another person laying low that I don't think will be targeted is Tacor. She definitely has the better relationships of between, between her and Chemo, and I think she has a much better game sense overall. Yeah, it's frustrating that she wasn't pushing harder and maybe getting Leah on the block instead of Rabina, but she's pretty secure with like Chelsea, with Cam, with Cedric. I, obviously, Quinn trusts her a lot. She, I think Tucker would not target her at all. And she's she's one of the only people making like actual attempts with Leah at like, hey, what's going on with you? What's your game like? Who, how do you feel this week? And she has a great relationship with Angela, or one of the better relationships with Angela. Decor is in a very safe position. And a lot of times these games, if you make Final Two, you have to be likable. And I just think Decor comes off as a very likable person. And because she's so insulated well, because I think she's so non-threatening to a lot of people, she's just going to get her way out there until the final five, final four. And if she can make it to that final two, unless there's somebody with a super big resume that's likable, I think it's going to be tough to stop Decor in a final two. Because she's likable, she has a great story. And because I just think that she's kind of involved with everybody and everybody has a reason why they, she, you know, they would vote to court a win. But she's not my number one ranked player, no. The number one ranked player for me this week is Chelsea. I, she is behind Brooklyn in terms of, I think, the best position of the house power structure-wise. She has the trust of people like Decor, of Chemo, even of, of Tucker of, in some ways, and Mackenzie. She kind of smartly identifies that Rabina is her best target to get out this week. I don't know if she'll be able to flush it that much. She has shields galore in front of her with, you know, Quinn, Cedric, Cam, Tucker, even Brooklyn a bit. She's so well insulated. As long as she doesn't get sniped out by Quinn in the middle of this game, I could see her running a whole way and kind of controlling this house all the way through. It's a long time to go for that. We'll have to see. But I definitely think she's in the power position, and I definitely think she has a lot of shields in front of her and people that would be going way before Chelsea in the pecking order. Um, unless something terrible goes wrong and her game gets heavily exposed. But I don't think people will attribute Kel Chelsea as much as the smart player with things like the Pentagon. People like, I think, Cedric and Cam would protect her you know, over people like Brooklyn and Quinn. So she's very, very, very well insulated. She's very, very smart in what's going on in the game. And as long as she doesn't get pegged by somebody like Quinn as the brains and the number one person in this house, she has very well good foundations with just about everybody in the house to, I think, win the social game and to not be seeing the block anytime, anytime soon. So... She is my number one ranked player. Now, 
I will maybe get back to doing the daily updates. I mean, the problem with this cast is they're so goddamn boring, and there's so little game talk going on, partly because of the AI twist, partly because we're stuck with the collective and a bunch of people who aren't really trying to form a counter-alliance. So there isn't really much to update day-to-day, I find. I'll try to do my best with the morning updates. I will definitely do a week in review this Friday. And my other plan this week is I have a short day on Thursday. We are going to go watch, we're going to watch the live eviction episode here on my channel Thursday night. And maybe the feeds afterwards. Maybe we'll get a endurance comp this week. If we get one of those, we'll watch that on the feeds too all night. I don't care. But thank you for stopping in here on Josh Does Movies. Um, leave a like and subscription if you're following me for the Big Brother content. If you're looking for more movie content, you can find it on the channel here. I've got to go see a couple movies on Wednesday or you know Tuesday night to figure out what's going on there. And we'll be back Thursday night live stream. So I will see you then for live eviction night. Thank you for stopping by. And yeah, let's see if somebody's going to flip this thing or if it's going to be another boring week leading up to the eviction. Peace.